Welcome back to Can It Be a Mead? In this series, we test whether some ingredient combos done randomly can be a good mead combo. I've done 10 other episodes if you're curious to watch those, but essentially it boils down to me spinning two different wheels that dictate the total uh, ingredients for the brew. So I have a wheel that is mostly fruits and flavors like that with some uh, variables there. And then I have a spices and other flavors wheel. In a previous episode, I did a honey wheel as well to choose what kind of honey, but it got a little too wild, to be honest. So we're just doing these two wheels. Let's go ahead and spin our first one, which is our fruit and uh, flavors, I should say. There is a chance that this stays a traditional mead, but that'd be kind of boring in my opinion. So here we go. Let's see what we got. Here is our fruit or other flavor, mostly fruits on here. All right, here's a new one for me. This is lingonberry. That's our first ingredient. Um, I don't even know where you get lingonberry, so that's gonna be a fun one to figure out. And here is our extra or other flavor component. This one has a lot of wild stuff on it. All right, here we go. Let's spin it and see. The other flavor is going to be lingonberry and, ooh, mint. That was almost curry, <laughs> so I don't know how that was gonna go. Lingonberry and mint. So I'm gonna go ahead and formulate a plan and we're gonna come back and start making this brew. I might do a quick montage of me making it, uh, but here we go. And it's time to make this mead. I formulated the recipe you see on screen after doing some research and um, after figuring out lingonberry is not very accessible to me. I did find a source and that was through Amazon and it's to this jam. It's kind of a preservative sort. So I ordered it. We have our lingonberry jam and we went ahead and mixed up our beginning mead. We made a traditional mead to start. I wasn't sure how volatile the flavors were with lingonberry and I didn't want to lose them if they were very sensitive and or would be blown off in fermentation. So we blended up honey, water, and yeast to a starting gravity of 1.074. We pitched in our yeast, which was the Lalvin 71B. It's a decent yeast for what we're doing and I think it'll do well. After blending all of that, we went ahead and put it into a dark and room temp place to ferment. We added our yeast nutrient at 24 hours so that it would get plenty of uh, yeast nutrient and the yeast would be healthy in general. At that point, we just let it set again. Two and a half weeks goes by. We went ahead and racked it into a new container and stabilized it with potassium sorbate and metabisulfite. This is to hopefully keep some of the sugar coming from our lingonberry jam, which we're gonna add. You see a little bit of headspace. That's a great thing because the jam is gonna take up that headspace. We waited 24 hours and added our lingonberry jam and let it just sit in there. It kind of got a little fluffy there at the bottom. About two weeks of it settling and sitting, we noticed that it was all the way at the bottom and I racked it again into a new container. The gravity after the primary fermentation was 1.000. I did not take one after adding the lingonberry, so I have no idea how much sugar came from that. After racking off of that lingonberry, we waited another about 24 hours and we went ahead and back sweetened with eight ounces of mango blossom honey. That brought it up to 1.020 final gravity. We also added our mint, our fresh mint at this point. So all we did was take a couple leaves and drop them into the container. They sat in there for roughly about three days. I did do a lot of taste testing to see if I needed to rack them off earlier, but it was about three days then we went ahead and bottled it straight off of those mint. So that's what we did there. Now that we've seen the whole process, let's see if lingonberry and mint can make a good mead combo. Let's go. Carlos, welcome to yet another tasting on the channel, Great. live in person. <laughs> At yes. this point, you've been on the channel a lot, some virtually, because we did some Zoom tastings, yeah. but now you're in town. We're getting to hang out. Yeah. I just told you about this bad boy, lingonberry, weird flavor, um, jam for anyone that needs to get it. If you have it local to you, then congrats. You get the prize. I don't know what the prize is, but you get something. And then mint. This is a pretty easy brew. I think that this mead is less than a month old. I am... Yes, and people are probably gonna get mad and say like, why are you tasting things so early? 
But maybe that's part of the fun. Maybe it's the fun to see if you can push something out quickly. But this is also a testament that good fermentation techniques, you can actually have a mead. That's true. Relatively It's good. not all so. about, always just about, um, you know, letting things age. So this is over a month, barely. The 25th of last month. Okay. So should be clear, because I did force clear it. So that was helpful there. Oh yeah, that is, that is brilliantly clear right there. 9.8, about 10%, just shy, 10%. Uh, mango blossom honey. Okay. Because that's what I had. I think is what I used. Hold on. Pause the tape. Let's see. Nope, JK. I used um, like clover honey. Straight up, just regular old clover. So that's where that, that, that star anise smell is coming from. Mm hmm. Was that clover honey? Yep. Yeah, Ooh, it does have a little bit of heat on the nose. That's maybe it's just the, the combination of things though. Yeah. Interesting. Like I'm not getting a lot of heat, but I'm getting like the star knee cinnamon mm -hmm. that I normally get from clover honey. It is very spicy. That's interesting. Yeah. That's weird. Interesting. All right, shall we? Let's show. Shall we embark? Yes. Cheers. Cheers. <sighs> oh. That lingonberry. It is that trying to describe sweet <laughs> and tart at the same time. Right. You're like, okay, sweet, tart, like cranberries, but it's different than cranberries. There's like a tea vibe to this. I get a really like tea based. I, want, uh, I wonder if that's coming from the mint. Cause I think I'm, def so. I'm definitely getting like a fresh herbally mint. Yeah. But it doesn't have like that prickly mint. Yeah, this flavor. is a very different mint vibe than like my blueberry mint, which I feel like I gave you. I feel like that one's very different. Yeah. This is like subtle, smooth, but you get the mint. It doesn't have that harsh mint like gum or anything uh -huh. else. We're get, putting a fresh mint leaf like mojito. Yeah. It doesn't have that sharpness to it. It's a smooth, well-rounded flavor. I like it. Even from when I tasted this a couple days ago, I feel like this has changed a little bit. It's got a like a, the lingonberry, I can't explain. I can't figure out what, even I feel like Wikipedia does, doesn't know how to explain it. People say it's like cranberry, which I get a little bit of that, but like, not exactly. Yeah, no. like I get the, the the astringency of like cranberries. Yeah, like I'm getting some of that astringency, but it's not that tart astringency. Yeah, it's just a little astringent with the with some sweetness that comes in from behind it. Hmm. I'm I'm a pretty big fan of this. It's also crazy to me because this, if I know what ABV it is, it doesn't feel like ten percent. You know what I mean? I won't call you a liar and say it's not ten <laughs> percent. I would have I would have I would have thought this was like a session. Maybe. Yeah, I know. That's weird. That's crazy. That's really good. One month. One. Just a little month. over a month. Oh yeah. You can't have good mead. You can. It's true. No, the older it gets, probably it'll get better. But at the same time, with mint, sometimes older is not always best because yeah. you start getting the herbal. Overly herbal, yeah. um, vegetal that comes off of it. So, right. you know. I do wonder because this was fresh mint, and that's what uh, Jake Dog Sick Fetch. He was always he's kind of talked about that too. He said fresh mint can sometimes put that off, especially yeah. over time. So I don't know. I'm very curious to see if that ends up popping out. But I don't know. I'm gonna crush this though. <laughs> that's pretty good. I would say this is can it be a mead episode 11? The combination of lingonberry. And mint, I think that can work. Oh, 100% it can work. I think the only limiting factor is can you get lingonberries <laughs> in your yeah, life? Because yeah. I can't, other than this. Um, this The problem with this, obviously jams, was it used or took up so much space in that oh, carboy. Yeah. I lost probably a third of a gallon of mead because I was trying to not get all of the junk yeah. at the bottom. So if you have them local to you, uh, or I guess maybe if I just started in the primary with this, I don't really know. I was scared to do primary for that. Mm. Overall, I would say this works. Would you say this is a good combo? Oh, it is a great combo. My only suggestion, mm -hmm. cold and carbonated. Ooh, I, I would agree. <laughs> I do think I can see this being real extra crushable. Oh yeah. For sure. 10%, like I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna crush this right now. <laughs> but put this carbonated and cold, oh, yeah. it's what, 100 degrees outside. Oh, I'm crushing this all day long. Yeah. Mm. Within a month, yes, 100%. Um, well, here's the recipe card if you're interested in making this. And uh, as Carlos said, you could carbonate it. I would say this is probably not going to be very good bottle carbonated because there is some honey here that's helping yeah. accentuate the lingonberry. The 
the use of erythritol or some uh, non-fermentable is going to add some flavor that's not honey-based. Yeah. That's not to say don't do it. Just expect a different profile from the mead if you don't back sweeten with honey. So, Carlos, thank you for tasting this. All right, thanks for letting me This have has it. been the first episode of Can It Be a Mead in like two years. So this is like the re-inaugural. Oh, welcome back. Uh, well, I know. And there's, <laughs> there's four more coming up. I've already got four of them or five of them done or working on them. But if you want to check out and support Carlos, because he's got some big things happening in his life, he is the owner operator of Texas Longhouse Mead, located in Wiley, Texas, and I'll put a bunch of links below. He's about to open up shop and or has opened up shop by the time this video has gone live. So you can go and support him, go buy some mead, uh, buy some merch, buy some all the things online. And uh, yeah, anything else? Did I miss anything about the meadery? No, if, if this ain't out by then, uh, <laughs> we got- uh, We're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're in trouble, but. <laughs> Hopefully we'll be open, so come on by, stop on by, and hopefully when we're open, we'll be able to start shipping, so. Yeah, check just, out Vino Shipper. I think yeah. that's where they're going through. Yeah. Cool. Just follow us on Instagram, and we'll keep everybody updated. Sweet. Hi, right, thanks, Carlos. Thank you. Cheers, everybody. I killed it. <laughs>